Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another Giants video. Hope everybody's okay, washing your hands, staying safe, wearing your masks, all of that stuff. Uh, you know, we want to get this, you know, this situation gone as soon as possible. So let's just let's just do our part and get it over with because I'm getting tired of it and because of the schedule release yesterday I'm hype I'm pumped you already know I can't wait for football season to get here and I would rather it get here sooner rather than later and with that being said smash that like button hit that subscribe button let's get into my schedule prediction video last time I talked about the schedule it was an overview gave my thoughts on it I thought you know it was a pretty damn difficult schedule our first half of those first six weeks. Honestly, really tough. I mean, I'm not saying the Giants are gonna go 0-6 those first six weeks, but it's gonna be tough to scrape out with a win there. Uh, let's leave that for when I get into it, which is right now. So preseason, I don't really care about the preseason except to see maybe how this new, you know, coaching staff works, their habits in the preseason. I, you know, they're not gonna show everything. It's just like with any other coaching staff in the preseason. They never show their full hands. They have, they script like every single drive. They have only certain amount of plays that they're gonna show. But I think it is gonna give us an idea of what the offense, defense, and special teams could look like under the new regime. And that's about all that I could gather from the preseason. Of course, if there's any names that come up, you know, guys that could crack the squad, whether it's from practice squad players, undrafted free agents, of course, I'll talk about them. But in terms of the games themselves, don't really care about it. Giants go 4-0 in the preseason. We beat the Jets. We, uh, you know, we beat the Jets every time. Last year didn't happen. That was just a fluke. Jets came out with a win out of nowhere. Not gonna happen again. We gonna whoop the Titans. Derrick Henry not running all over this defense. I don't know what Titans fans are thinking. We gonna beat the Green Bay Packers. Most overrated team in the NFL last year. They pissed off Aaron Rodgers. He's probably gonna throw a hissy fit. And you know, he's not even gonna play in the preseason. It's the preseason. We beat the Packers. We beat the Patriots. We own the Patriots. It do not matter. Game one, week one, Monday Night Football, home against the Steelers. Steelers going to come out, they going to come out, and they going to get a big upset. We beating the Steelers. You know why? Steelers get better as the season goes on, and this is both teams coming out of the offseason. Both teams are coming out off of a weird offseason. Both teams are going to be on equal footing. The Steelers, Big Ben is old now, bro. He's old. He take one hit, he going to be broken. The amount of injuries this guys have, I have no idea. I will say, though, keep an eye out for the underrated Steelers, uh secondary and of course their pass rush but we're gonna be running the ball saquon gonna win us this game week two against the bears w bears don't even know who their quarterback is enough said week three against the 49ers where they were in the super bowl last year but super bowl hangovers is a thing i don't know what they think they're gonna do w three and oh week four against the rams rams <laughs> Yo, Rams, I don't even know if they're going to make the playoffs again this year, y'all. They had a pretty big collapse last year. Of course, you could attribute that to the Super Bowl hangover. But Jared Goff, um, most overrated quarterback in the NFL. The, you know, they lost Todd Gurley, and no matter who they replace him with, he's not going to be good at, at, as good as Todd Gurley on his best day as an injured player. W against the Rams. I don't know what they think. You know, they're going to get a couple sacks on us. So that secondary going to get exposed in their linebacking court. They lost some good additions. 4-0. Week 5 against the Cowboys. Uh, what is this? This away at the Cowboys? Listen, Cowboys are the same thing as the Steelers. They get better as the season goes on. This is kind of like not even midway through yet. But listen, man, who knows what's going to happen with that quarterback situation? Is it Andy Dalton? Is it Dak Prescott? Either way, it's going to be a W because we got the clapper now. We have all of their secrets. Dallas can't sniff us this year. Week, what is this? Week six against the Redskins? Is this even a question? Even in our on our worst day, we whooped the Wetskins. W six and zero. Week seven against the um, Philadelphia Eagles, bro. Listen, man. Eagles. Carson Wentz or Carson Wentz, as Skip Bayless says, is Jalen Hurts gonna come in? Who knows? What did they do about the receiving core? Got another Nelson Aguilar. I don't know what's going on in Philadelphia. Their defense is overrated. Team as a whole is overrated, but they're probably gonna be the team to beat in the NFC East, which is why we gonna beat them. W, seven and no. Do I even need to continue, bro? We beat the Bucks. We beat the Redskins. We beat the Eagles again. We gonna whoop the Bengals. We gonna beat the Seahawks, beat the Cardinals. It's gonna be a close game against the Browns just because it's a storyline. Beat them, beat the Ravens. It's gonna be close, but it's gonna be a high scoring game. Danny Dimes gonna act Activate Super Saiyan mode, we beat them, and we beat the Cowboys at home, close it out, 16-0, I don't even know why y'all tuned in, bro, this is, this is my serious prediction here too, no joke, 
16 0 Giants. Let's get it. What y'all doing, man? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that that would be how my prediction would go if I was uh, if I was a little um overzealous, little uh, a little little too invested, and maybe um not seeing the reality of things. But um. Let me know if you guys like that. I'm sure people probably clicked, clicked away from the video by now. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. There's probably people who didn't look down at the timestamps or, you know, just look down at the timeline and they probably clicked away. But um, obviously, I just added that in there for fun. And to be honest with you, I added it in there for fun because it's not gonna be a fun schedule to go through. So um, let's actually go through it seriously now. Week one against the Steelers, I, uh, I honestly think, I don't know, man. This, I, I did mean what I said in the joke. How about this is probably gonna be the easiest game for us to win in terms of both teams are coming out of the offseason a weird one where both of them had you know shortened practices uh all that you know they're both fresh it's it's a new league year this is probably in terms of you know that the easiest game we could try and win within these first six weeks uh and it's at home monday night but i'm gonna give it to the steelers the steelers do start off late too like that that is a fact the past like what four or five years the steelers always go on a run late in the year but I, I'm going to give this to the Steelers. They're, they're a better team than us. That pass rush and secondary is what you're, what you're really going to have to look out for. I think if the Giants want any chance of winning, they're going to have to stick to the ground and really run the football. Both because, you know, to avoid the secondary and also to keep the offensive line intact. Offensive lines in general do better when they're in running. And, you know, they're actually moving forward rather than having to kind of stay static and are uh, moving a curve to protect the passer. So, you know, Steelers got this. If the Giants want to win, my my game plan would be stick to the run, man. Um, then we go against the Bears at, you know, Soldier Field. This is a, this is one that we could actually win. Um, and I'm, I'm going to give us this one just because I feel like the Bears aren't going to start off with Foles immediately. I, I think they're going to start off with Trubisky. And after he, you know, inevitably fails him after the first two, three weeks. And I think this will be part of his failure. Then they're going to put in Foles because they're not completely giving up on Trubisky yet. But I think we're going to win this one. And it's going to be because of that. It's going to be because of poor offensive play from the Bears' side. You know their defense is going to show up. And we did beat them two years ago. We did beat them two years ago. I think we could uh, reclaim that magic that we had in that Bears game for sure. Um, we're a better team than we were last year once again stick to the ground and running but i don't think the bear secondary is what it was in that 2018 season that that showed up last year i think daniel jones could probably try and expose them a bit maybe he'll have a good game but i do think we win this one against the bears so we're one and one but then we go to the 49ers i mean the 49ers come to us it's a home game uh they're gonna beat us it's just um <laughs> the super bowl hangover thing is definitely something to keep in mind but this is a Super Bowl caliber team. They can make it back there again. One of the, you know, most well put together teams in the league. Absolute stifling defense with that defensive line. Their linebacking core, extremely underrated. And, you know, I think their weakest part of the defense is actually their secondary. You know, that's up for debate. But I say that because I think their linebacking core is better than what people give it credit for. You know, Alexander and Warner and stuff. But, yeah, this is a really well put together team. Jimmy G is a top 15 quarterback. They have great offensive weapons. They have a great run game. I think this this is what I question the 49ers is going to win this game. Then we go up against the Rams. Um, once again, another a little truth in the joke that I said is that I have no idea what to expect from the Rams this year. They can, you know, they're not going to reclaim what they had in 2018, but they could definitely reclaim what they had in 2017, the year where they really broke in. You know, they broke out in the NFL and they went. I think they went 12 and four. I'm not saying they're going to go 12 and 4, but I'm saying they could have, you know, the same type of year that they had in 2017, which was really good defense and high power offense. Now, can they do what they had when Todd Gurley was in his prime? No, but they still have, I think, good, good enough quarterback play, uh, a good enough running back, still a pretty damn good offensive line, um, you know, good weapons. But most importantly, the coaching is still there for them to, re you know, or at least create some type of offense. Their defense, it lost its pieces, keeping it real with y'all. It lost some pieces, but they didn't lose enough for them to lose against a very young, up-and-coming Giants team that really is, in my opinion, a year away, which is why this schedule is going to go the way it is, my schedule prediction. So I think we do lose against the Rams, and now we're 1-3, uh, and three, and we go up against the Cowboys. And this stretch right here, uh, this is a stretch that's really going to determine the standings of the NFC East. 
this uh what is this from week four to week six seven to week seven really gonna determine the standards of the nfc east because we face the cowboys redskins eagles in order and then you know after that it's like we faced the redskins and eagles like a week after so it's like you face the entirety of the nfc east and i think it's really going to determine what the standings are uh it's going to be an important week for the giants and certainly you know momentum is a thing uncle mo is a fickle guy he could switch whenever he wants but i do think at this point in the year we lose against dallas because it's away i think it's going to be closer than what people think because our games with the cowboys are almost always closer than people think it's a divisional game giants are going to play out and play hard and that jason garrett thing wasn't a joke either he definitely can lend us some secrets you know about what he used to do for dak or something like that the offense um i'm still not fully convinced on you know their offensive coordinator on their coaching hires on mike mccarthy the dallas cowboys this year could either be you know really good or extremely mediocre and because they're also in their, their situation where it's like you know a new coaching hire and all that but they are still a better put together team than we are they have more talent as of right now i think players on the giants in like say a year are going to be better than what the cowboys have but as of right now, at this point in the careers, the Cowboys are just a better team. And, you know, that's coming from like one of the biggest Dallas Cowboy haters. But they do take this W. I just think it's going to be closer than what people think. And we're at, uh, honestly an abysmal 1-4. Fans are probably going to start to panic. You know, ownership, if rumors are true, are going to make stupid decisions and probably do some stupid things. I'm hoping that they don't. Because we have a game against the Redskins that I was not joking about. The Giants said their worst always beat the Redskins. I'm sorry, Redskins fans. It's a fact. Uh, we beat y'all uh, twice last year. We um, we always beat you. And I think this is the game that the defense really comes together, just like the Redskins games last year, because we have an extremely underrated secondary. It is an extremely young secondary, but this is the game. I think they show out a little bit, and I think the defense comes together. We get a couple sacks from the guys up front. We get a couple bad passes, maybe interceptions from the guy in the back. I think the defense comes together in this game, and it's a home game. And the offense produces, just, you know, just like the way Redskins games have been going for the past couple years, our best performances has been against the Redskins. And so we take a win there, we're 2-4, and four, but then we go up against the Eagles away at Lincoln Financial Field. I would love for the Giants this year to break the curse under Joe Judge. The curse that's been, you know, the past 10, 15 years, where the, no, it's just been the past 10. Where Giants can't sniff a win in Philadelphia, no matter how close they come. Now, I will say this. If there's any year it's going to happen, it's this year. Because for the past two, Saquon Barkley has single-handedly almost beat the Eagles for us. And this year, if he does it again, I know we got a coach that's not stupid and, you know, would not take him out of the game and stop running him. If he's dominating the Eagles, he's going to continue it for four quarters. And so because of that, I'm going to get a little hate. <sighs> I, think we, I think we beat the Eagles. I do. So what are we now? We won against the Bears, Redskins, and Eagles, and we're three and four. Ah, uh, yeah, man, this is, yeah, I don't know. I just think that because Saquon has single-handedly, you know, he has single-handedly beaten the Eagles for us before, I think that this time around, with a coach that actually will keep him in there, and with a better offensive line, you know, and a better offense in general, I just think that we could probably sneak out with a win. And, and that's the key word there, sneak out with the win. I, it's, it all comes down to coaching. We had the Eagles in the bag for the past two years, but Pat Shermer just continues to let us down by forgetting Saquon Barkley existed. And it almost seemed like he sabotaged the games on purpose. I mean, he was originally a, an Eagles coach. So it seemed like he did that on purpose a couple of times. But if Saquon can recreate that, we're good. Because we're better than we were last year and we had them on the ropes in the game last year just like we did in 2018 so if we if we recreate that we stick to the ground game and we have a better quarterback in daniel jones at this point in his career than eli was at the end of his i think we could come out with a win now then we go up against the bucks another monday night game at home tom Bay, tom brady and the bucks this is a game like chicago was last year in the sense that in 2018 we beat chicago and it was kind of a sneaky win um, in 2019, we beat the Bucks, and it was a sneaky win. Of course, Daniel Jones's uh, debut game, and this is the year that they get their revenge, like Chicago did last year. I think the Bucks do come on to get their revenge. Do I think they're gonna be what everybody is lauding them to be? You know, a team that's going like 13 wins or something like that, making the playoffs, automatic shoe win for the NFC Championship? No, I don't. 
But I do think they are going to be better than last year simply because Brady doesn't turn the ball over as much as Jameis does. Not sure if their offense is going to be as high power, but they are a team to look out for. I think it's it would be stupid to ignore them. I just don't think, you know, they're going to be 13 and 3 or something like that. Probably like a, you know, a 9-10 win team or something. But they're definitely teams to look out for and I think this is going to be the revenge game. Maybe even for the Bucks a coming out game on Monday Night Football National Television. They take the win here and then halfway through the season, Giants are sitting at 3 and 5. Which if they can pull out three wins through the first eight games in the season, I will be ecstatic. Because I've said it countless times now, these first eight games, the first half of the season is extremely tough. It's probably the, the toughest first half of the season in, of any team in the NFL this year. The schedule is absolutely brutal. And if we could, we could pick out three wins here, I'll be happy. And you know, you know, we got one in the first four weeks and then we got two in a row against division opponents. And if those two in a row come against division opponents, that's gonna be good for us in terms of NFC East standings. Now, personally, I'm not expecting playoffs, but of course, as a fan, I'm always aiming for playoffs. You're always aiming for the Super Bowl. So in terms of that, getting two of your wins against divisional opponents, that's that's amazing. And my mic just fall, fell down. I don't know if you guys heard that. But yeah, <laughs> that would be amazing. So then we open up against the Redskins. Um, this time at Washington and yeah, I got us winning there again. I yo straight up. I'm sorry. Maybe I am way too biased, but Giants just own the Redskins. It's a thing. It is a thing and we are a better team than the Redskins straight up I think that wholeheartedly that we are a better team than the Redskins I think we have a better offensive line than do than they do. I think we have a better running back than they do You could argue wide receivers, but they definitely have a number one which is arguable on the Giants side but I think in terms of depth we have more wide receiver depth than they do. Uh, tight ends, we have a better tight end, even though they both face the same problem with injuries. Definitely a better running back. Um, defensive wise, we gotta actually throw up the defensive line. That's a toss up. Washington does have a pretty good defensive line. Uh, we have better linebacking core than they do, and I think we got a better secondary than they do. Like so, I think just overall the Giants are a better team, and this is one of the teams that we could confidently say we could beat. And now we're at a four and five record, which is pretty damn good <laughs> but then we go up against the eagles at home fully expect the eagles to come out and get their revenge for the team for the win that we snuck out at lincoln financial field from them in that thursday night game so listen i'm not we're not sweeping the eagles no matter what like how we beat the redskins eagles will beat us and like i said there's definitely a chance they sweep us again this year for like the the 10th time in a row but we're not sweeping them no matter what and eagles will get the revenge and Eagles, like the Cowboys, like the Steelers, in the past couple of years or so, always go on a run. Later in the season, maybe they start picking things up and they're starting to go for, you know, their playoff berth. And we go into the bye week at a 4-6 and six record, a respectable record in my opinion. That's pretty good for a team that went 4-12 and 12 last year. Pretty good for a team with a new coaching staff, uh, you know, quarterback in his second year, completely new systems for everybody coming off the COVID offseason, like you consider all the things going into the season, I think this is a pretty good record. Four and six, and I I think this is very possible. It's just that I don't know if the wins are gonna fall where I'm putting the wins to fall, but I think four and six is possible at the bye week. Well, I would be extremely happy with this. We're probably still in playoff contention, knowing the NFC East. You know, not saying that, once again, not saying we're gonna make the playoffs, but we're probably still in playoff contention. So we come out of the bye week and we go up against the Bengals, and in my overview video, I said that I don't know why odds makers had us losing to the Bengals because like the Redskins, I think that the Giants are a better team than the Bengals right now and probably in the future. And the Bengals are going to be, you know, with their rookie quarterback. I can't remember the last time. Actually, I do. Deshaun Watson was the last time a rookie quarterback came in and had this like sort of sensational start to the season before he went down. Joe Burrow could do that, but I think the Bengals did a disservice to him by not going offensive linemen sooner in the draft or you know maybe not even making a move for them in the uh off season and whatnot and we could break it down just like the redskins i think we have right now a better quarterback than the bengals i'll say this though i think joe burrow could be a better quarterback than daniel jones down the line straight up uh i think he's just a little bit more talented than dj and i might get hate from that from you know fellow giants fans but i'm the guy the guy had probably the greatest college football season in the history of college football right there, that's not something you just overlook but past that, we have a better offensive line, a better running back. Um, wide receivers, once again, is a toss-up, but I think when it comes to depth, we might beat them out. But you know what? For the sake of conversation, let me give wide receivers to the Bengals. 
Um, tight end, we got a better tight end. Defensive line, I think we have a better defensive line. Uh, linebackers, honestly, kind of a toss-up. And secondary, I think we have a better secondary. You know, I think we're just a better team than the Bengals. And this is, I think we're going to get this win. I don't, I'm not sure exactly why people don't think we could beat them. Now we're five and six. But then we go up against the Seahawks. And this is kind of where, this is kind of where a little bit of a losing streak starts. Because the Seahawks are a really good team, had a really good draft. There's no way around it. They're just better than us. They're just a way more experienced team better in kind of every aspect and the Seahawks are going to beat us and it's at home it's at the 12th man so I don't really see us pulling out with a win here unless there's a collapse on the Seahawks side Cardinals uh both of these teams got better in the offseason right Giants got better Cardinals got better and last year when they were around the same levels of uh goodness if that's a word uh Cardinals came out with the win of course last year that game coaching you know the, the imbecileness just the, just the non-coaching ability of Pat Shermer was at its height when we faced the Cardinals. And I'm fairly sure Joe Judge is a more competent coach than Pat Shermer. But Cardinals, I think, are going to be a sneaky good team this year. I think they're going to be like a 8-9 win team, really good. And I, I do think that they beat us at home. Now then we come up against the Browns at home. My favorite game, personally. And this is the game I'm going to be trying to go to. I've said a couple times on the channel, I try to go to one Giants game every year. Depending on you know how things fall, this is gonna be the one I try to go to. I usually go to one in December because my birthday is uh, like December first, so I try to go to like it's gonna be one of three games. It's gonna be either uh, Cardinals or Browns. Hopefully, it's gonna be Browns. But this right here, all types of storylines, man. Baker Mayfield storylines, you know, talking about Daniel Jones, talking about the Giants, talking about Giants fans. Of course, the Odell Beckham storyline. If he's still on the Browns at this point in the year. Um, Okay, there's this Kevin Zeitler storyline if you want to talk about that. Jabril Peppers, you know, of course, they were involved in Olivia Vernon and Odell trades. Pretty good amount of storylines, and the NFL knows it. The NFL themselves, you know, their talking heads, they've said that this is a game that they have circled on their calendars too. And uh, whether or not we win this is truly up to whether or not the Browns are incompetent this year. Now, I think they are going to be because they're the Browns and because, once again, they're with a first-year head coach in Kevin Stefanski who, you know, I think could be better than Pat Shermer was. But, you know, history has shown that Minnesota offensive coordinators don't make the best head coaches. And I definitely think that there were better candidates out there for the Browns. I actually thought a good fit would have been Mike McCarthy for them. But that's that's not a conversation for here right now. But the Browns, this is honestly completely up to whether or not they, uh, they fall flat on their faces. And since I do think they're going to, I think we come out with a win. It's at home, which is another plus for us. I think, you know, I think the Browns are going to be who we thought they were. As, you know, Tennessee said last year, I think they're, they're going to go with respectable, you know, 7-9, and 8-8. Nine, eight and eight. And you know what? I'm going to say this, probably a bold prediction, but really early. However many wins the Browns have, the Giants are going to be like right there with them. They're going to be within two or three games with them. Now, within two games with them. And I think we're going to beat them. And now we're out here at a, with a 6-8 and eight record, completely on pace for what I think the Giants are going to go. I've said several times. No, probably we're only two weeks left here on this prediction. I've said several times I think the Giants are a 6-7 win team. Completely on pace for that. There's no way I see us beating the Ravens. Just like with the Seahawks, just like with the 49ers. I, I cannot see a way that the Giants come out and beat the Ravens. I'm sorry. They're one of the best teams. They're probably the best team in the league. I don't see a way that we overcome their defense. And I don't see a way that our defense stops their offense. There's no other way around it. Ravens beat us. I'm not even sure if I need to get into that. And then we close out the season against the Cowboys. Um, honestly, a toss-up game. I don't want the I don't want to have the Cowboys sweeping us, but it's very possible. Extremely possible. They're, at this point in the season, I expect them to be in a better, you know, playoff position than we are. I expect them to be playing for higher stakes than we are. And I expect them to be playing with better momentum than we are. So I really don't want to end off the season on a Cowboys sweep, but it might happen. It might happen, but I, I could also see us beating them and closing out the season on a strong note at home. I'll leave that up to you guys. Like I said, six, seven win season. If we get seven wins, is going to be the last game of the season against the Cowboys at home. But because of just the situation that I think is going to happen, and I probably should have said this at the beginning, you know, disclaimer, this is just my opinion. Opinions are, you know, subjective and all that. I think the Cowboys are going to be in a better position and, you know, playing for higher stakes at the end of the year that the Giants are. So they're probably going to be playing harder 
then with the, not to say the Giants are going to be playing hard. I just think the Cowboys are going to come out and really try to get this win. However, I can also see the Giants coming out and just wanting wanting to end on a strong note this season wanting to put a nice stamp a nice seven win season to show that hey we're going in the right direction we're improving that could happen too so i'll leave that up to you guys a six or seven win season just like i said you know that's where i think they are so let me know what you guys think put your comments down below the video has been fairly long my bad i didn't expect it to go around 30 minutes let me know what you thought about you know the uh the fake predictions at the beginning if you stuck around and what what is your prediction for the giants that's it for now, I'm out. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer!